Hi friends, it's good to see you here today. I'm so excited that you're back. We're going to keep working on our story. We've been learning about Joseph and his life and seeing what life lessons God has for us through the life of Joseph. And friends, I'm wondering if you guys remember, think, 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 put your thinking caps on. Do you know our memory verse? Not up there. It's not going to help you. <laughs> Did you remember? It was kind of a long one. It, it's down here below you. Let's see if we can look at it and maybe if you can say it with me. I'm going to try and not put it in front of Travis's face. I know sometimes he doesn't like it when he can't see it too. But it says, Ephesians 4.32, be kind and compassionate to one another, forgiving each other, just as Christ, God, forgave you. Ephesians 4.32, be kind and compassionate. Yeah, that was our memory verse. One, we want to think about tucking God's word in our heart so that when times are tough, we can remember what God tells us to do, remembering his words, tucking his words in our hearts so that we don't forget what he tells us to do so we can do the right thing and pray and ask him to help us. So that's a very important thing to do. Friends, we're going to look back here on our storyboard and kind of backtrack. It means go back a little bit and see if we can also remember the lessons we learn through the life of Joseph so far. Can you remember the very first one? That, yeah, that's right. It was cannot be jealous. God doesn't want us to be jealous. Do you remember his brothers, Joseph's brothers, that were jealous because of his beautiful coat? And that's not a good thing. Nope, jealousy is not good. God does not want us to be jealous. And then the next one, I know you're going to twist your neck a little bit, huh? Back up there. Can you guys see that one? Up here, they were so jealous that they weren't kind. That's right. One, they wanted to actually kill him, and then one of the brothers said, mm, let's not do that. Put him in a pit. And then when he left, the other brothers sold him to some men on some camels that passed by. And then that being unkind led to... Yep, it led to a lie. Can you guys see that back there? I'll move out of the way just a little. You can see that. They lied to their dad to tell him that Joseph had been killed by some wild animals. And it made their dad super sad. And God wants us to be truth tellers. Yes, <laughs> like that, exactly. Truth tellers. He says, be a truth teller. So first we learn to not be jealous, and that's when you want something somebody else has. And then we should always tell the truth. Oh, be kind. I have I got them mixed up. It was be kind and then always be a truth teller. That was the next life lesson. And now, friends, we're on to this one right back here, this page. Can you guys see that over there? Turn a little bit sideways and you can kind of look. And this is interesting because Joseph, when the men bought him, they actually took him to a place called Egypt. They traveled to Egypt. And it turned out it wasn't such a bad thing. God put him in a family there where he started working for them and ended up actually in charge of their household. He was kind of like, they had a, a lot of money and a lot of land and a lot of things. And the person, the, the man that was the home, the who owned the home, he said, you know what? I see Joseph that you're good and you're honest and you make smart decisions and I'm putting you in charge of running my house. And there was a lot of good that happened, a lot of good things. Joseph still listened to God. He prayed and he listened and he knew the right things to do. And everything was going really, really good. But then, I know it's always a but then, somebody lied about him. The husband's wife actually lied about his character. 
And because of that, Joseph got thrown into prison. Mm -hmm. That was sad. He got thrown into prison. So that, you know, wasn't a good thing. He, somebody lied and it really did hurt. It hurt him because he was thrown into prison. But do you know what he did in prison? No, he did not scream. <laughs> um, no, I don't think he did that either. I don't think he went fishing. No, he actually kept praying and he kept listening to God. And when he did, God started telling him things. Some of the other people in prison were having dreams and they couldn't understand it. And some of the people that were in charge of him, giving him food and stuff, had dreams. And God gave Joseph the ability to interpret those dreams. That means he, he was able to tell them what it meant. And because of that, word actually got to the king that there was a guy in prison that could tell you what your dreams meant because God told him. He would pray and ask God and God would say, hey, that's what this means. And the king had had a dream and he didn't understand it. And so he had Joseph said, hey, have him come here. I want to see if he knows what this one means. And sure enough, God told Joseph exactly what the dream meant. And the dream for the king was that they were going to have seven years where they would have lots and lots and lots of food grow and lots of good time with their land. The crops, which are the wheat and the stuff that grows to feed you, would be very good and healthy. And then after that, there was going to come another time period where it wasn't going to be good. It, yeah, or not at all. And so what God was trying to warn them was take this seven years and store the food. Take care of it. Pack it up. And so the king, he made Joseph in charge of that. I know, right? So he got put right back in charge of doing what he knew to do best. And he ended up taking care of the people, all of the people, because he listened to God. Even when things were tough, he listened. And he didn't say, oh gosh, I can't do this and nobody loves me. He still, no matter what situation he was in, he prayed and he said, God, help me. And God helped him and he ended up right back in charge. So God took care of him, even when the situation looked pretty scary. So that is what, that was the, the next lesson was that sharing. Well, I don't think of it actually, we're there yet. Mm, yeah, actually we are because um, part of the story, sorry, I was trying to remember which part we were at. Part of the story is when there was no food, there was, it was called a famine. Joseph's dad said to the brothers, Hey, go over to Egypt. I heard the king has food and he's giving it out to the people. So his brothers actually traveled to Egypt and it just so happened that they were there and Joseph was able to share the food with them. And that was interesting because remember they weren't nice to Joseph. But Joseph was kind and shared, even though they weren't. Mm-hmm. It's just like our, our memory verse. Be kind and compassionate. Joseph was kind and compassionate. He keeps kind and compassionate, just showing that Jesus forgave him and he could forgive others. It's very cool how in the end, God turned everything that was looked yucky and scary, and he made it turn into good for Joseph and his family. Oh, really? You want me to show? He wants me to show. He's got something. It's not in his heart. It was up here. It was kind of puffy. So he was showing. He's got two, whoops, two necklaces. What are those for? Oh, one's for you. Should I put, put one on? Yeah. Okay, we're going to put the orange one on you. And the other one Oh, is it for your friend Lucy? Oh, he has another one he's sharing with his friend. And you're, you're, how are you going to give? That's a good idea. He's, I was wondering how he's going to get it to her because he's not seeing her. He's not at school right now. So 
we're gonna see, but he said he's gonna put it in the mail. That's a really good idea. Put it in the mail and he's sharing, sharing something he's got too, so he's gonna share. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I'm wondering friends, or he's wondering if you have something you can share with a friend. Do you have two of something or can you make something? Maybe make a necklace and share it with a friend. You know, that friend could be your sister or brother. I know. They, they are your friends. God put them there for a reason. So see what you can do to share with others because sharing makes people happy. It gives them joy. And even if it's putting something like that in the mail and mailing it out, how fun would that be to have open up a package and have that? That would be so much fun. It'd bring joy to someone else. Maybe grandma or grandpa, somebody who's kind of stuck at home for a while. Give them some joy. Share with them. All right, friends, I love you. I hope you have a wonderful week and we will see you next week. And just remember, we are praying also for all the firemen and all the workers out. Yeah, I know, a little, it's a little smoky out there, that's right. But God is taking care of us and God is in control and we are praying for safety for everybody. All right, love you guys. Have a wonderful week. We'll see you next Sunday, bye.